Good. Let's go ahead and um, pray. Lord God, thank you for your kindness and goodness towards us. Help us not to look into your Bible and to understand it. We ask this in your Son's name, Jesus Christ, for beside you there is not God. Amen. Amen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now, we're dealing with... Uh, we, we, the week before, or the weeks before, we have been dealing with a tabernacle, and then we finished that, and then we moved over to the garments of the high priest, and now we're going to be looking at the consecration of the high priest. And we're, we're going to see if we can put it all together, um, make it sense, because God makes it make sense. It's just that we don't, or I don't. And so that's the problem. Oops. Um, now this is let me give you an intro here in Leviticus 1.1 1, 1, and this is going to be like a preview of the book we're going to be looking at after we looked at Matthew we're going to be after Exodus we're going to Matthew and then from Matthew we're coming back to Leviticus and so look at this and the Lord called unto Moses and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, you shall bring an offering of the cattle, even of the herd, and of the flock. Out of the tabernacle of the congregation. Very interesting, because look what it says here. Um, it says, twice we're told, an offering. Okay, so at Mount Sinai, we're still dealing, we're freshly just out of the law. There was, the law was given at Mount Sinai, and also at Mount Sinai was given the pattern for the tabernacle. So the two. Now here's, the law is demanding, it demands... And this is what we've been seeing, the law, because the Jewish people, of all people in the world, these are the people that have decided to tackle the law. But the sacrifices which meet the demand of the law was not given at Mount Sinai. The sacrifices were given out of the tabernacle. Interesting, because that gives us a picture of how God puts a demand on us, but then he shows us that the demand is going to be met within you. And that's when you become a Christian, Jesus starts living in you. And that's how the demand of the law is going to be met. If you try to meet the demand of the law on your own, you can't do it. Living the Christian life is going to have to be done through Jesus in you. You know, that's what that shows us. And it's amazing we're going to look we're going to touch a little bit on the sacrifices but before we do that this is the intro i mean this is the thesis and you shall be holy unto me for i the lord am holy and have severed you from other people that you should be mine this is amazing folks now holy now does anybody have an idea of what holy means anybody have a, a Yes, brother? When you're whole, like Christ, maybe. Very good. That's great. Yeah, to be whole. I mean, because a lot of times we think that holy... And, and I looked at the dictionary, um, the, he, the Hebrew dictionary, uh, that, and I didn't like the definition, you know. Uh, to be ceremonially, morally, uh, an angel, a saint, a sanctuary. I mean, I didn't like that definition. But what I, the reason I'm showing you this is because it says, see, see that blue? From 6942, the root for this word, Kadosh, comes from 6942, which is Kadesh, which is holy. Whole. That's why I'm showing you this. Now, what I do like, yes, ma'am. What I understand for the word holy in the Yes, that's always how I looked at it, separate. 
You know, that's I've always grown up looking at holy, to be separate. Like God is separate from his creation. He is perfect. God is complete in himself. He is totally there. God is one. You know, he is, he's totally there. He's complete, entire. But look at that. Look at the, so that's where he well put. Now look at this. This is Webster's 1828. Holy, whole, entire, or perfect. I like that definition. I like it. And if you looked at the word whole from Webster's Dictionary, it means total, all, <laughs> containing the total amount of number or entire thing. And that's how God created us. Originally, we were whole. We were whole. And that's, so heaven, this is the need for the high priest. This is why we have the need for the high priest. Because remember, he gave us the law. And then, because of Jewish people, they were asked, are you able to do it? They says, yes. Remember that? Several times they were told, are you going to be able to meet the demands of the law? And they said, yes, we can do this. And this guy says, okay, get on that roller coaster because we're going to take a ride. And so that's the thing with the law. It's going to take you for a ride. And the demands are so high. And it, it's amazing. It, I'm, great that, I'm, I'm glad that the Jewish people did this because we now see what we have in Jesus Christ. You know, he met. He's the only one that's ever met the demands. He's the only one. And so... Um, so we are a broken people. We're broken. We're not whole. <clears throat> and this is why we have problems. Big time. We have problems, you know. And um, that's, this is why the high priest is needed so much. He's a psychiatrist. And this is, this is what the pastor plays. That's the part. Brother Bess is constantly dealing with problems. You know, I don't envy his position in no way. <laughs> I don't. People have asked me throughout my lifetime, says, why, why aren't you a pastor? Because I was not called to be a pastor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Period. I mean, life is rough already. <coughs> why do I want to borrow trouble? You know? People, the Lord calls those people, like Brother Bess. If you're not called, if you're not called, don't go there. Because these are the only people that are going to be supplied with what they need. Um, because we're a broken people. Now look at this. The law is going to expose us. That's what the law is going to do. Because we think we're okay. You know, years ago, I meant to put up an image of that at the book there. You're okay, I'm okay. Remember that? Yeah. I think we're it was... All okay. Yeah, we're all okay. No, we're not. But that book sold, I mean, it was a bestseller, you know, on the New York list. And it was, uh, I think it was produced in the 70s or something, you know. It's a lie. It was a lie. That's why I probably never read it. But look at this. This is what Rome, Paul tells us this. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not. But the evil which I would not that I do. So that tells you we're, we're broken. We are messed up. And so... Look at this. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who should deliver me from the body of this death? And that's the frustration that you'll, you'll come across. And folks, if you, if you get saved and you're not being discipled, you're going to run into this. And it, it, can, it can wear you out because right. you think, see, I got saved and there was nobody around. I got saved by myself reading the Bible. And then it was like this, up and down, up and down. I, would, I thought I was going to be holy. And then I sinned. I mean, within days I began saved. I'm back in my old ways. I says, I must not be saved. And then I'm really feeling really bad for all these days until finally somehow I says, Lord, I messed up. He says, okay. So I'm confessing. Now I feel great again. And, and then shortly and within hours, I'm back again. I says, good night. I wish I would have never gotten saved. Now it's really bad. <laughs> I mean, it's like this. It's like, and, and there was nobody around to explain this to me. There was nobody around to say, you know, what you're going through. It's a, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. 
And, but this is the law. This is that body of death because that, there's two laws in you. When, people that are not saved only have one, the law of sin and death. It's living in them. But then once you get saved, you have another law come into play, and that's the, the, the life of spirit, the spirit of life in you at the same time. Remember in the book of uh, uh, Esther, when the, 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 the law went out to kill all the Jews? And, and Mordecai and, and Esther says, why don't you just resend the thing and void it out? He says, I can't. Once the law goes out, you can't stop it. He says, what do we do? We'll put, put another law in there. Now you have two laws. The second law says, okay, the Jews can defend themselves. And they can take property too. Ooh. So now you have two laws in effect into throughout the whole Persian Empire. Oh, that's good. You know, two laws working at the same time. And this is what this is. So this is why you're going to be so messed up. You need a high. You need the high priest. I'm telling you, years ago I was working at the other church. I mean, at, at, at Brother Lee's church. I was. I think I was on a Saturday and I was cleaning something in the church, the classroom or something. And the phone rang and I picked it up. And a guy says, uh, "Who are you?" I says, "Oh, I'm a teacher here." He says, "Is the pastor there?" I says, "No, he's not." I says, well, I have a problem. I says, well, you need to call probably wait till Monday, and he'll be here. He says, well, I really need help now. I says, well, maybe I can help. What is it? He says, well, I got a problem with my marriage. I says, oh, I'm not qualified. So, you know. <laughs> he come back Monday. He says, well, what do you do? I says, I'm a teacher. He says, well, maybe you can help me. I says, well, maybe. Well, what is it? He says, well, I'm married to a woman that's not a Christian. I says, okay. He says, and I, the Lord has just brought a beautiful Christian woman into my life. <laughs> <laughs> and I says, oh, I can help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> he says, you know what? It wasn't the Lord that brought her. He says, what? Yeah. But she's a Christian. I says, you, man, you're married. Yeah. Amen. He says, but she's not a Christian. I says, I don't care. She's married. And then he says, plink. I says, okay. I was just being a high priest to him. You know, I was trying to help him out. I says, dude, you're married. But he didn't like the answer. Now, that's, now that's what this, folks, the minute you become a Christian, you, you become a priest. We're a, a royal priesthood. So we can help each other. And we do. We can be a priest to each other. Yeah, help good. each other along the ways. Um, yeah. to give uh, advice and, and, and counsel because we have the living God inside us. Amen. You know? That you should be mine. Now look at this. I want you to be holy. And this brings up a very interesting thing because we all need this. We need to be loved. Uh, it's a need that's inside us and it's partly mad when we get married. But it's partly mad because we need that. Uh, to function correctly, and they tell us that even if a baby, if a baby comes into a, into a family and is not caressed or held, or, or he won't be healthy. He's got, likely to acquire all kinds of sickness and so on. But the more you hold the baby and coo it and carry it and hug it and so on, you're in, you meet that need that we all need. Mm -hmm. um, so that you, but look at this: that you should be mine. That's what the Lord says. Now look at this. This is still, I needed to go back. This is a promo for Leviticus, you know, a promo for, we won't get to Leviticus for a while, but just to entice you and whet your appetite, you need to be here for Leviticus after Matthew, okay? Now, <laughs> Leviticus is a picture book of Jesus. Be holy or whole. So God, the law demands, puts demands on us, and at the same time, he gives us a provision for the demands, to meet the demands of the law. So look at this. Look what the Lord does. And I think this is his great love for us. You know, he, he knows that we can meet the demands. He's told us there's none one righteous, no, not one. Uh, Paul tells us that. You know, you need to know that up at the beginning. Uh, up front when you start uh, this walk. We are a sinful people and therefore deserve to die. That's it. This is why. But look at this. 
Leprosy is mentioned 29 times. I mean, in just Leviticus it by itself. And leprosy is a, is a picture of sin. And that's what it's, it, this is why Leviticus is, is so key to understanding this. Um, look at this. The sacrifices teaches us that sin brings death. And by laying hands on an animal, one is identified with the animal. This is what the sacrifices are going to be to show us um, what sin does. So when you lay hands on the animal, you're transferring your sin to the animal. You know, you're doing that. And now the animal is, 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 is brought out that he's got to be without blemish. Because the value is, that's the value. You, you're transferring your uh, sins to a thing that's without blemish, without, as the word, sin. You know, so, it's, you, and God is going to show you, you need this because you're so messed up. You have, you're going to find out because the law is going to show you that, how sinful you are. So you need to find out a way to release that. And I think how many people, I don't know how the world does it. I guess... I've often thought if I wasn't a Christian, I would have died a few years ago. I've uh, been an alcoholic, you know. Yeah. I would have, because how do you deal with it? You gotta go to do something to fix that problem, that the guilt and the frustration that comes. Um, but God is gonna provide. He says, "Here's how you get rid of this thing," you know. Now and look, the death of the animal is make makes atonement, and again. Look at Leviticus. Leviticus, there's about, about 80 times Levit atonement is mentioned in the Bible, but mostly you find it in Leviticus. Atonement is going to be made. And uh, that's unity or, or reconciliation. Uh, when you find that uh, you're loved and you're accepted, you know. Um, so God has this sacrificial system. Okay? And he mentions that, now there are five Offerings, burnt offering, meat offering, peace offering, sin offering, and trespass offering, which we're not going to cover. I'm just, we're going to touch on two of them. Well, we'll touch on three, but two of them, are, I just want to show you two of them. And later on, when we get into Leviticus, we're going to get into it. Oh, yeah. But that's after Matthew. So you don't have to worry just yet. Okay. Now, look at this. The burnt offering. The burnt offering. Um, if his offering be a, a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him bring a male without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. This burnt offering must be a male. Now there's other creatures, but this one, the burnt offering, and it usually has to deal with a high priest or a leader. It had to be a uh, male, and it had to be whole, without blemish. That's what that means. And lay hands on it. That means substitution. You're going to put your. You're going to substitute your. That animal is going to take your place. And I, when I was putting this together, I thought, you know, isn't that funny how the people later on in Malachi they bring animals that are blind, you know, deformed or sickly or something. I said, dude, <laughs> you're transferring this to you know something that's sick. The Lord says, no, you gotta, you got to see it. you got to see it that your sin is going to a perfect animal. I mean, I, if, if somebody's going to take my place, they got to be better than I. I mean, because I'm already messed up. Somebody, whoever takes my place, has got to be better than I. In order for me to, my, my guilt, my psychic to be fixed, you know, th there's so much going on here. Now, at the same time, you kill it on the north side and cut it, and it must die. That's what that means. You gotta cut it and kill it, cut it. And there's no way it's coming back. It's dead uh, on the north side. Okay, so you cut it up, and then you gotta sprinkle the blood. God's gotta see it that it's really dead. God's gotta see because that thing that takes your place is dead, and God saw it. He said, "Okay," and uh, and it's gotta be totally consumed. This thing is burnt up. You know, this is the burnt offering. What does that mean? Burnt offering means you get nothing. That's what that means. I get it all. 
And that means you're accepted. And that, that is going to help you. That's going to help me to know that, oh, folks, it was so nice to lay across my mom's lap and just have her rub my, my back or scratch my back. That was heaven, you know? As a little boy, just to be laying there, to know that my mom loved me without, you know, any strings attached. And that's what God wants us to feel towards him, to be accepted. That's what that means. Uh, you get nothing. God gets it all. Because it's, it's mine. You get nothing. That's what this burnt offering meant. You are mine. And when you, when, when you know that God, you belong to God, it brings another kind of a world into you, into your being. Yeah. You know? I'm at peace, you know. God owns, I belong to God. You know, no matter what anybody says, yeah. it's cool. My father, the creator of the universe, I belong to him. Amen. He's my father, and I can rightfully call him my father. <clears throat> you know, um, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. We're accepted. You know, nothing you have to do. You don't have to bring straight A's or nothing. You don't have to perform. You don't have to be nothing. You're accepted. Amen. Isn't it great? That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, now, that's, the, that's where God says, you're mine, and now this is a response in the meat offering. The meat offering is bread or grain or flour. And every oblation of thy meat offering shall thou season with salt, and thou shalt put oil upon it, and lay franken frankincense thereon. It is a meat offering. So this is the meat offering, and look at this. Oil, which is the Holy Spirit, praise and uh, frankincense, which is praise and thanksgiving, salt, which is the preservative or good influence. This is what you bring. God says, you are mine, and now you're telling the Lord, Lord, this is what I bring. I bring this. Uh, a Holy Spirit, thankful, being a good influence. And then look what it says. He says, no meat offering which you shall bring unto the Lord shall be made with leaven, for you shall put, burn no leaven, <clears throat> nor any honey in any offering of the Lord made by fire. So you, you bring these three, but these things you cannot put on there. Leaven or honey. What does that mean? Being puffed up or sin. You don't, you don't put that in there. Or natural sweetness. And you think of natural sweetness, and I think about one man that was here in our church not too long ago. Uh, remember Alejandro? Brother Alejandro? That man was always good and kind. I mean, I don't... You wonder about those people. Do they ever get angry? You know? Do they... They're always kind and good and stuff. Now, that's natural sweetness. God says, that doesn't work. I want you to be sweet, even though you're not, your disposition is not sweet. You need to be sweet, you know? But, so the natural sweetness doesn't count. You're gonna to have to work on it, you know, to the point where even when you don't like it, you know, but, and don't be puffed up. So this is what this, is what this means. The meat offering was no blood, a living sacrifice. His life made available, available in us. This is what you bring. And so what you're saying now, this offering that was burned, you, you burn all these things together. My life resurrected, offered to you, O oh Lord. I am yours. God says to you, you are mine. And then you respond by saying, Lord, I am yours. To have and to hold. You know, I mean, this is it. I'm it. And look, this is what Romans tells us. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. So God tells you, I am yours, you are mine in the first sacrifice, and then you respond but with a meat offering. Okay? So I wanted to show you these two, because look, um, so now this is where we left off. Okay, now we, we continue with the lesson. Uh, and thou shalt make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness from the loins even unto the thighs they shall reach. And they shall be upon Aaron and upon his sons when they shall 
when they come into the tabernacle of the congregation or when they come near unto the altar to minister in the holy place, that they bear not iniquity and die. It shall be a statue forever unto him and to his seat after him. So this is where we left off. And we're told here, this is the law. This is the demands of the law. You're going to do this. Linen breeches. And this is the thing. This is inward holiness. Inward, um, because the outer garments, everybody can see that. But the undergarments, nobody can see except the Lord. So the Lord is saying, I want you to be when nobody's watching. And you know what, folks? When you travel someplace that nobody knows you, there's a temptation that comes in the flesh. Says, you know you can do anything you want to in this town, and the chances of you getting caught are pretty zero because nobody knows you here. And then the little voice says, uh, 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 somebody's watching. Oh, yeah. So you better walk straight. But see, because God watches that. Why, God, this is what the priests were told. If you're going to be a priest, God, you're going to be ministering. Look what it says. Uh, this is inward righteousness. And you're going to be ministering when, uh, when they come. They shall be upon Aaron and upon his sons. When they come into the tabernacle of the congregation, when they come near the altar to minister in the holy place. So they need to be, they have, they have to have a righteousness, even a righteousness that's, uh, that's what the Lord wants. And in the inward life, I mean, we can impress each, other's, each other with, with a life of, um, that's easily seen, you know, by coming to church. But um, does that make sense? Does anybody have any comments or uh, questions there? Because this is what we left off last week concerning the, the dress of the high priest. And it's funny because this is the last thing we get dealt with. You know, we just already covered the entire garments. But now we get, this is the last thing. The Lord says, oh, and by the way, this is the bridges. The undergarments have to be white linen as well. The Bible says that white linen is the righteousness of saints in Revelation, right? Yes, yes. And it says... What's the verse it said? You need to be lest they walk naked and see their shame. Yes. So, personal righteousness. Personal, exactly. Good. That's it's a very good verse in Revelations because it says the the linen is the righteousness of the saints, and if you don't have that, you're gonna be naked, naked before God. And so that's here it is. It's stressing that when you come into the tabernacle or the altar, the minister. And so this is the high priest. Behold, thou desires truth in the inward parts, in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. So this is God is saying this. I'm look, I see beyond what you can see. And so the Lord, the Bible tells us the Lord weighs the spirits. He knows our motives. You know, on the outside, you know, and sometimes... It, we, you can easily get into a thing where you're doing things outwardly, but God says, I know what you're really doing. It. You know, why you're really doing this thing. Uh, you can't fool God. And this is the thing that thou shalt do unto them to hallow them, to minister unto me in the priest's office. Take one young bullock and two rams without blemish. Even here, we're in, we're in Exodus, and even here, there's a lot of pictures, you know, the great pictures. Um, thou, the law, again, the law is doing this. These are the demands of the law. It says, this is my requirements. And even for the high priest, because they're going to be ministering to pronounce them clean, to, hollow, to empower them, to hollow them. The priest, and this is the guy that's going to mediate. Like I did with that man that called us, is oh, because evidently he must he must have been a Christian because I mean he called the church, and he wanted somebody to back and to tell him yes you're right, you can marry this woman because after all she's a Christian and you're a Christian and the marry the woman you're married to is not a Christian. He was expecting me to tell him that's a yeah the Lord brought her. No, he didn't. You know, because I was acting as a priest, I was mediating for the Lord. I says, 
Uh uh-uh, uh, you're wrong. You're married. Um, so bring a bring a heifer or bring a bullock and two rams. This is interesting, folks. Because look at this. You know, there's a company. It's amazing when you go through life how many pictures you see of the Bible laying all over the place out there. People don't even know it. Even when you drive a Dodge truck, ram power. That's what that means. You know, the power. That's what that means. So you have power, two powers, and a sacrifice. The sacrifice is first. You sacrifice the ox to plow, and then you give up your power, and God's power is received. You know? I think think that's what that means. You give up your power, and God's going to give you, and I'll show you why, if if we can get there. Um, And unleavened bread and cakes, unleavened tempered with oil and wafers, unleavened anointed with oil, of wheat and flour shalt thou make them, and thou shalt put them in one basket and bring them in a basket with a bullock and the two rams. And again, look at all the pictures that are here. Uh, God is saying this, unleavened. Okay, we know that it, that is without sin. You're going to bring bread without sin twice, we're told. You're gonna, and that's your life. Your life without sin. Um, that's what you need to bring. Tempered with oil, mixed, a mixed compound. That's what that means. Um, so here you have the bread, the wafers, the, the, the bread, the, the cakes and the wafers, and then the oil. And I put the salt, although it's not mentioned here, because in, in another place the Bible says, never bring this without the salt. Always bring the salt. You know. But in this case, this is just the beginning. This is the first time that God is telling them, we're going consecrate to the, consecrate the high priest. So, and look, it says, so life without hypocrisy, that's what God wants, without leaven, and in a basket. I said, what? What does that mean, in a basket? Because everything that's in the Bible means something. And so I look up the word basket, and it means, it says, uh, basket, weave, or something. Or I says, that's it, to weave. You weave everything together. And that's what you're going to offer. A life uh, full of uh, hypocrisy, a spiritual life, and then later on, the good works are going to be added because you need to be salty. You're gonna, you need to be the salt of the earth because uh, if, if the salt has lost its favor, what is it good for? Uh, what are you doing? Just bringing the oxygen? Um, we're told that. So here's the thing. Uh, but first, nonetheless, first, you got to have the, the bullock. That's got, before you start dealing with the power. You got to deal with the bullock first. And Aaron and his son shall bring unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and shall wash. And thou, look at, look at this, let me read it again. And Aaron and his sons, thou shall bring into the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and shall wash them with water. Now, that's the tabernacle. That's why we looked at it. And, and here's something that's interesting too, again. I mean, always when you're reading the Bible, you're always asking questions. You got to, because it's, well, what is this? Not only what does this mean, but why are this? There's some things missing here. Because look, this is bring them unto the door of the tabernacle. And I don't know whether, I was thinking, is it the door or is it the gate? I says, because remember, these are about two, three million people. And this is being done before their faces. They need to see, because God is about to put power on this people. This, is, this, this system did not exist before, the high priest. So he's about to do this. I says, how can all these people see it? Well, they didn't have to, because they had representatives there. They probably had about 70 people. And you can fit those 70 people in there easily. So, but you couldn't fit two, three million people within that structure. So I think the representatives were there to see this happening, this going on. And so they're going to be washed. Moses is going to be washing them. What a scene that must have been. But I says, you know what's missing? The labor. We haven't covered the labor. We covered everything else, but we haven't covered. We, co- we didn't cover the altar of incense. Ah. 
And we, we haven't covered the labor. What is the labor? The labor was this structure. And right before you get into that tabernacle, where you wash your hands and you wash your feet, it was a labor of brass. Brass means judgment. And what the God is saying is, is, I think this is confession. You judge. You judge yourself. That you not be not judged. When you come to the Lord, and we're told that. That's why Brother Best, when we have the Lord's Supper, he tells us we're going to have a, a silent moment. Uh, so that you can uh, confess, you know, wash yourself. That's what that means, right? of all known sin, because you're coming into the presence of God. And so, but it's not here at this time. This is another system. There's much more there, folks. I tell you what, we're just having a survey, you know. Um, and thou shalt take the garments and put them upon Aaron, the coat and the robe of the of the ephod and the ephod and the breastplate and gird him with the curious girdle of the ephod and thou shalt put the mitre upon his head and the, and put the holy crown upon his on mitre then shalt thou take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him and these people that are there I'm sure they understood what this meant see when you read the Bible we're reading a Jewish book you know this is why this is why the Torah is so important. You're reading the Jewish mind. You know, that's how you're going to make sense of the whole Bible. If a lot of people, what they do is spend most of their time in the New Testament, they don't get into it. They don't see what God is talking about. We're reading the Jewish mind. So you need to go into the Jewish culture. What does that mean? Uh, to understand what God is saying. And put the, the, the code on there and cover him. So they're going to be watching this. They're going to be watching these people, the representatives are watching who Aaron, this is power is about, about to be bestowed upon him. And thou shalt take the anointing oil and put, pour it on his head and anoint him. And thou shalt bring his sons and put the coats upon them and thou shalt gird them with girdles, Aaron and his sons, and put the bonnets on them and the priest's office shall be theirs. For a perpetual statute. Statute. And thou shalt consecrate Aaron and his sons. There it is. Also, they being put coats. They're not the same as the high priest. They're priests. But their garments are different. Okay? Their garments, and that's us, folks. We only have one high priest. And he's up in heaven. And we are, uh, we're the priesthood. We're the sons of Aaron. We are the sons. You know? So that's us. Uh, and, you, and, the, and this is the, their office. That shall be their office. That's our office. You know, that shall be the high priest. We're going to be doing this uh, to each other and for, for this world. And we need to be doing that because the Jews were supposed to be doing this. And they're not doing it, folks. Because if you go over there, they don't even believe in Jesus. They're still waiting for Jesus to come, the, the, the Messiah. So this is what this is. Thou sh and thou shalt cause the bullock to be brought before the tabernacle of the congregation, and Aaron and his son shall put their hands upon the head of the bullock. So here's the, okay, right there where the, where the uh, labor should be, that's where they're doing it. They're going to kill the bullock right there before, before you enter into the tabernacle. This is where you're going to kill it. Okay? Aaron and his sons are going to put their hands upon him. What does that mean? They're transferring their sinfulness to the bullock. A bullock without blemish. And everybody needs to see this. That these guys are going to be accepted to do the, the ministry of the, of the high priest because they're being accepted. They're going to be transferring. They're going to be clean. Okay? They identify with the bullock and so they're dealt with. Now, and thou shalt kill the bullock before the Lord at, by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and thou shalt take of the blood of the bullock and put it upon the horns of the altar with thy fingers, and pour all the blood beside the bottom of the altar. This is what the law is doing, and they need to all see this. Kill the bullock before the Lord by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and then take the blood of the bullock and put it upon the horns of the altar with thy finger. So when God looks down, he sees the blood. It's placed there. He needs to see it. The blood is very important. God needs to see it because that animal has died. 
that animal is dead and the blood proves that it's dead and therefore they're accepted. The priests are now accepted. They're now going to be consecrated. For the flesh of the for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. So you, it's made an atonement. You're okay. You're reconciled. That's what that means. When God sees the blood, good. Aaron and his sons have been taken care of. They're good. Look what it says. And thou shalt take all the fat that is over the inwards and the call that is above the liver and the two kidneys and the fat that is upon them and burn them upon the altar. But the flesh of the bullock and the skin and his dung shalt thou burn with fire without the camp. It is a sin offering. Now here's the other offering. Good night, Lord. What does that mean? The fat, God says, the blood and the fat are mine. Always. You, the blood says, you have no right to take another life. That's my business. And the fat is all the goodness, all the richness. The richness of life belongs to God. Every good thing comes from the Father above. Everything. Everything good in our lives is from Him. Amen. Everything. You didn't earn it. You didn't, I mean, it's from Him. This is what this tells us. The, but the flesh. Look what This is a sin offering. Look what it says. We're going to um, cover a little bit. Look. And, and so look what it says. Here's Jerusalem, folks. We'll, we'll stop here. Look at this. They brought him at night. They picked him up at the garden. The Lord Jesus. They picked him up at the garden. By morning, by 6 o'clock in the morning, they have already found him guilty. The high priest. They brought him to the high priest's office. Uh, and by that time, right before 7, they sent him back to Pilate. And he says, this man deserves to die. Pilate says, why? What has he done? So Pilate, right before 8 o'clock, he sends him back to Herod. Herod happened to be in town because that was the Passover. And Herod, early in the morning, Herod wants him, Jesus to see some, do some magic or something, walk on the water or something. Yeah. And the Lord does nothing, nothing. But you know what, folks? I believe during this time, the Lord Jesus is already dripping blood because they beat him over at the priest, uh, priest office. They slapped him. Says, when they asked him, or thou the Christ, the, the son of the blessed? And he says, I am. You blasphemer, and they beat him up. They put a cloth over his face, and they beat him up. So I believe he was already dripping blood. Now, he comes from Herod. Right before 9, he comes from Herod. And he goes to Pilate's, house, to Pilate's fortress. And at this point, Pilate says, I'm gonna, I don't find anything wrong with him, so I'm going to beat him up with a whip. And maybe they'll feel sorry for him and we'll let him go. But the people says, no, we want him crucified. And look what happens, folks. At 9 o'clock, or right before 9 o'clock, he goes out to the garden tomb. And look where it's at. It's on the north side of Jerusalem. There's two, there's two sepulchers in Jerusalem. The one that's right close to where the tree is, that's called, you go to Jerusalem and you find people lined up kissing the rock there or whatever. I just go in over there and says, this isn't the place, folks. They, got, they have the Via Dolorosa stop there. I says, no, no, no. The real place is outside the city. And that's where most Protestants go to see the, the tomb, the empty tomb. It's in another place. That, folks, look what it says. And he shall kill it on the side of the altar northward before the Lord. And the priest Aaron's son shall sprinkle the blood round the bod upon the altar. Amazing how this fulfills, Lord. The, the, the blood and the altar and the sacrifice I was all performed. We're going to stop, have to stop there. Let us close with a word of prayer. Lord God, thank you for your kindness and goodness towards us. Thank you for the many pictures you have, oh Lord, to show us and explain to us, oh Lord, what we have in you and how our psychic can be made whole, Lord, through your sacrifice. We ask and that you now continue to bless the rest of the, the day. We ask this in your son's name, and we thank you also in the name of Jesus Christ, for beside you there is another God. Amen. Thank you. Amen.